Hi, my name is Kevin Kirkham uh, with Ophir Spirocon. I'm the Northwest Regional uh, Sales Manager. Today we're going to talk about uh, measuring laser beam spot sizes and divergence in beam gauge. So I have a helium neon laser set up here with proper attenuation on one of our SP620 CCD cameras. And in beam gauge I have already configured the software for a region of interest that's appropriate for the spot size. In this case we're measuring the spot size at about a half a millimeter. Um, I have both the D4 Sigma, our, our ISO approved beam width method enabled, as well as a uh, percent of peak, which is equivalent to the 1 over E squared point of the software. So both beam widths are being computed simultaneously. Uh, first of all, we want to block the beam and then click on the UltraCal icon and let the software perform an UltraCal process. UltraCal takes 64 frames and averages them to create a baseline or zero reference point in the data. Once the UltraCal process is completed, a green uh, enunciator appears in the lower right hand corner of the beam gauge screen. Um, now I remove the block on the laser the beam profile now appears in beam gauge, and I can see that the D4 sigma uh, beam width is being measured at 0.57 millimeters. The 1 over E squared, or 13.5% of peak beam width, is being measured at 0.63 millimeters. The purpose for UltraCal is to make sure that there is no net DC offset or, or net bias to the image that is going to affect the accuracy of the beam width measurement. Once the UltraCal process is completed, you will notice that the total power reading uh, is very close to zero. This is the sum of all the pixel values. So here I'm going to re-UltraCal the frame, and you'll see what I mean. Now the total of all the pixels creates a value that is alternately positive and negative. By resetting the chart, you can see that uh, these values alternate uh, between a, a slightly positive and slightly negative offset. This is the uh, functionality of UltraCal, that is to normalize or zero the, the baseline of the beam profile image. Now we'll go ahead and remove the cap on the laser and see that um, we have a properly measured beam. One way to confirm this is by using the beam width aperture. This is an aperture system that displays how the beam width is being computed. In this case, it uses the beam width basis method in the computations tab and as you can see in the, here it is set to the D4 Sigma ISO standard. You may choose to select any of the available beam width methods. This includes knife edge, percent of energy, percent of peak, moving slit, or encircled power, the smallest aperture. Whatever beam width method you select in this box is what is going to be used, the, the beam width aperture. You can see in, in this image that the aperture very closely matches the, uh, the image of the beam and changes dynamically as the beam changes. Beam gauge supports three different divergence measurements. Only the focal length method is ISO approved, but all three can be useful under the right conditions. Only one may be used at a time in the beam gauge environment. So I'm going to go to the computations tab and the divergence box 
and select focal length. Then I need to know the focal length of the lens that I will be employing. In this case, it's 100 millimeters. So I will type in 100 millimeters in the focal length box in the divergence area of the computations tab. Now, by double clicking on the computations tab, I will close it and go to the results area of beam gauge and select the ISO divergence angle. This is based on the diameter of the beam that is um, indicated in the beam width area of the computations tab. In this case, we're using the D4 sigma ISO beam width basis. Now you can see that the divergence angle is displayed in the results window. In this case, we are measuring a divergence angle of 5.4 milliradians. Again, you must know the focal length of the lens you're using, and you must place the camera at the focal plane so that the CCD sensor is precisely located at the focal plane of the lens you're using to focus the beam. Again, we can double check to see that the, by, that the um, computed beam width looks to be accurate. The aperture, in this case the beam width aperture, is being drawn at the appropriate place and um, the ISO D4 sigma beam width is being reported at 0.54 millimeters. If you wish, you can chart the divergence measurement and look for changes over time or in different thermal conditions of the laser. So this concludes a uh, discussion on how to calculate and measure beam divergence and spot size with the beam gauge beam profiling software system. If you have questions about beam gauge or any beam measurement application, please call us at 866-755-5499 or visit us on the web at www.ophiropt.com slash photonics. Thank you.